By the end of this video, you're going to be completing the square at lightning speed. And in about 30 seconds, here's how this video is going to get you there. We're going to start off by putting this quadratic in vertex form, and I'm going to give you the full three-step process that you need to complete the square quickly. After you've got that, then we're going to go through and complete the square again, but now we're also going to find the vertex and the zeros of that quadratic. After that, we're gonna talk about how we complete the square when the x squared here is not by itself. We'll put that into vertex form, and then we're gonna do a full example putting it all together where we have a quadratic where the x squared's not by itself, and we'll use that to find the vertex and the zeros of that quadratic. And after we go through all of that, I'm gonna give you a problem to try and answer in the comments, and by that point, it should honestly be breezy. And if you're looking at me and you're like, hey, Ludus, I love the notes that you're making for this video. I'd love to snag a copy. I have all that linked in the description. Also in the description, I have an extra video where you and I will go through and complete the square for 10 more quadratics and find the vertex and the zeros for each. But I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. So starting off with this first problem, we want to put this quadratic in vertex form, which means we need to complete the square. Now to complete the square, we need to use this three-step process here, which honestly only takes a few seconds, especially when you start to get good at this. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up that little squared piece with the x inside. And then we need to fill in the blank here. The number that's going to go there is what we get when we do our first step. We need to divide b by 2. And b is the number on x. Remember that that comes from the standard form of a quadratic, ax squared plus bx plus c. In that standard form, b is the number on x. And c, which is also mentioned in the step-by-step -step process, that's the number without the x. So those are important things to point out. So step one says to divide b by two. We wanna divide this negative four here by two, and we're gonna put that number here. So negative four divided by two is negative two. So we put that there, and step one is already done. Step two says to square and subtract. We're going to square this number, and we're gonna subtract it out here. Negative two squared is four, and so we're gonna put a four out here, and we're going to subtract it. Step two is done. And step three says to bring down our c. c is the number without the x on it. So we're going to bring down this plus three right out here. And now that's done. The only other thing we have to do now is we can combine like terms out here. And negative four plus three, that's negative one. And now we have this quadratic fully in vertex form. Now from this vertex form, we can find the vertex of the quadratic. That's the turning point of it. So if I draw a little parabola, the vertex would be that turning point there. And if the parabola looked like this, that would be the vertex. So you get the point. That is the point that we're finding when we find the vertex. And we can also find the zeros by just setting this thing equal to zero. So those are some things we can do. And the only other thing I want to mention before we move on to the next problem and actually go and find those pieces is that if you're looking for like exactly why this completing the square method works, I'll make another video on that. I just didn't want to include that in this video because it's a longer explanation and I'm really not even sure how many people actually want to see like, the full reasoning behind this. So if you do want to see all that and I haven't made the video yet, like if a pop-up didn't just come up on the screen right now, then hound me in the comments. So moving on to problem two, we're gonna actually put all this together now. We're gonna put this quadratic into vertex form by completing the square, and then we're gonna go and find the vertex and the zeros. So let's set that little squared piece up with x, and we'll start our step-by-step -step process. The first step is to divide b by two. b is six here, dividing that by two, we get three. And we put that here. Step one is done. Step two is to square this number and subtract it. 3 squared is 9. We put that out here and we subtract it. Step 2 is done. Step 3 is to bring down c. c is the number without the x. So we bring that out here and step 3 is done. And now we just combine like terms. So you see how easy this process is once you really start to get the hang of it. Negative 9 minus 12 is negative 21. And there you go we have our quadratic in vertex form. Now, what actually is vertex form in its entirety? Well, vertex form looks like this. It's a times x minus h squared plus k. And in that form, the vertex is h comma k. So it comes from these two numbers here, which in our case is the plus three and the negative 21. Those are gonna give us our h and our k. So that tells us the vertex. One little thing here that a lot of people end up messing up is that when we find our h, we have to flip the sign. 
So the vertex here, it's not going to be 3 comma negative 21. It's actually going to be negative 3 comma negative 21. We flipped this sign. And well, why is that? That a lot of people get confused with that. I got confused with that. I was like, why are we doing that? Well, if you look at the x minus h squared piece, what value of h would we have to plug in to get an x plus 3? Well, we wouldn't plug in a positive 3 for h, because if it's a positive 3, then we get x minus 3, because this negative is already there. If we want this to be an x plus 3, then h needs to be a negative 3. It has to be a negative 3. And if it is, then we have two negatives here, those become positive, and we get that x plus 3 squared that we want. And if this was a x minus 3 squared, and we wanted to get an x minus 3 here, then the h that we would have to plug in is a positive 3. So you see how the sign always changes. If we have a negative 3, then h is positive 3. And as we said before, if we have a plus 3, then h is negative 3. That's why we flip the sign there. So yeah, as we were saying, the vertex here is going to be, we flip the sign of that to get negative 3, and we keep the sign here, that's going to be negative 21. And that is our vertex in this problem. Now the other thing that this problem is asking for is the zeros of that quadratic. And to find the zeros of a quadratic, you set y equal to zero. And the reason for that is because if you have your parabola here, you're trying to find these points right here. Those points are where y is equal to zero. The y-axis controls how far up and down you go. And if you haven't went up and down at all, which is where the zeros are, then you're at y equals zero. That's why we set this thing equal to zero. So setting it equal to zero, what we're going to want to do is we want to isolate this thing that is being squared. Because if we isolate that piece, then what we can do is we can get rid of the square by square rooting both sides. The only thing we have to do to isolate that is actually add this 21 over to the other side. And doing that, I'll put the x plus 3 squared over here and the 21 on the other side. This is what we'll end up getting. And now that this thing that's being squared is isolated, we can square root it. And when we square root both sides, the square cancels out with the square root. So on the left hand side, we're just left with an x plus 3. And on the right hand side, we have a square root of 21. But there's one other thing I need to mention here. When you square root both sides, you have to put a plus or minus on one of the two sides. So we need to put it, we can put it right here in front of the square root of 21. Okay? And the only thing we need to do now to solve for x is subtract 3 on both sides. Doing that, we get that x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 21. And right there, those are our zeros. Now, it's not always this quick to complete the square. Sometimes you have to do an extra step. Because here, with this quadratic, we want to put this in vertex form. So we got to complete the square, but this x squared is not by itself. It has that 4 on it. And as you can see in the past two examples, the x squared has been by itself. It was by itself here and in problem 2. And in problem 1, the x squared was by itself. This three-step process will only work once the x squared is by itself. So we have to separate this 4 from the x squared somehow. We can do that by factoring the 4 out. So if we want to factor that 4 out, then we just need to divide each of these terms by 4. 4x squared divided by 4 is just the x squared. So now we have separated the 4 from the x squared like we wanted to. And then we have 8x divided by 4. That'll be a 2x. And then we have 3 divided by 4. 3 doesn't divide evenly by 4, so that's going to be a 3 fourths. We'll leave it just like that. And now we have a quadratic on the inside here that has the x squared by itself. And so we can use the three-step process on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change these parentheses here to brackets. And then I'll do parentheses on the inside to have our x something squared. Now the first step for this completing the square process is to divide that b by 2. b is 2. It's that number on the x. Dividing 2 by 2, we get 1. And so we put plus 1 here. That's step 1 already done. Step 2 is to square and subtract. So we're going to take this number, we square it, which 1 squared is 1, and we subtract it. That's step 2. Step 3 is to bring down c. c is the number without the x. So we bring down the plus 3 fourths. 
and that's it. We close that off with a bracket. Now what we can do here is we can combine like terms and then multiply the four back through, but actually uh, here's a little bit of a hack for you. Sometimes it's gonna be easier to combine those like terms if we have that four multiplied back through first, if this number on the outside gets multiplied back through first. Because sometimes it'll cancel off with these fractions and you won't have to find common denominators or anything like that. So if we multiply the four back through to the x plus one squared, like I've shown with that arrow, we get four times x plus one squared. Multiplying the 4 through to the negative 1, we get negative 4. And multiplying the 4 through to the 3 fourths, the 4s end up canceling and we're just left with plus 3. And now as you can see here, we don't need to find common denominators to combine like terms. So what we're left with is 4 times x plus 1 squared, and then negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. And now we have our quadratic in vertex form, just like the problem asked for. And uh, I mean, I guess we can just go and find our vertex here since we're already at it. If you wanted to find the vertex here, remember you change the sign of the piece inside the parentheses. So instead of plus one, it'd be negative one. And then you have the number out here, which you keep the sign of. So it's just gonna stay negative one. So the vertex here is negative one comma negative one. And the four out here, I know you might see that be eyeing it up, be like, well, does that change your vertex? No, it doesn't. It has no bearing on what your vertex is. The two numbers that matter when you're trying to find your vertex are these two numbers right here. The number inside the parentheses will give you your X coordinate and the number outside of the parentheses will give you your Y coordinate. So that's how we found our vertex. So now let's put it all together. Let's complete the square with this guy here. We'll find the vertex and we'll find the zeros. And I gotta admit, this problem does get messy. So first off, this two is on the x squared. So the x squared is not by itself. We have to get that two away. And we can do that by factoring the two out. So we factor the two out, then we need to divide each of these terms by two. Dividing two x squared by two, we get x squared. So the two is now separated from the x squared like we want. Dividing three x by two, 3 doesn't divide evenly by 2, so we'll leave that as a 3 halves x. And then dividing negative 1 by 2, we're left with negative 1 half. And now we have a quadratic that has the x squared by itself, and that is something we can use this three-step process on to complete the square. So we're going to change those parentheses again to brackets to make room for the little parentheses that are going to go on the inside. And that'll give us we can set up our x something squared, and that something that goes here is the b divided by two, our first step. Now, b is three halves here. Remember, b is the number on x. And if we wanna divide three halves by two, well, you can think about that as three halves being divided by two over one. It's just really nice this way because then you see a fraction on top and a fraction on bottom. If you wanna divide these two fractions, here's all you have to do. Just bring this denominator up to the numerator and flip it. So this ends up becoming three halves times a one half. We just bring this guy up and we flip it, giving us one half. And that'll give us three over four. So we saw that three halves divided by two is three fourths. And now that we have that done, step one is complete. So now we have to square that number and subtract it on the outside. Three fourths squared is the same thing as three squared divided by four squared. Three squared is nine, and four squared is 16. So three fourths squared is nine sixteenths. We'll put that number on the outside and we will subtract it. That right there is step two completed. Lastly, we have step three. Step three is to bring down C and C is that negative one half. And now we close that off with a bracket and from here, we can distribute through that two before we combine like terms. So we're gonna get two times x plus three fourths squared, multiplying the two through to the negative nine over 16, we will get the two cancels with the 16 a little bit, the two will become a one and the 16 will become an eight. And so we're gonna get negative nine over eight. So it doesn't completely cancel off our fractions, but I guess it will make it just a little bit nicer. And yeah, multiplying the two through to the negative one half, the twos will cancel and now we're just left with negative one. 
So that's what we're left with here. And negative 1, we can write that as negative 8 over 8 to get our common denominators. With that, we fully combine these like terms, and we get this thing into vertex form. We're going to get 2 times x plus 3 fourths squared minus a 17 over 8. And that is our quadratic in vertex form. Now from here, what's the vertex? Well, remember, the vertex comes from these two numbers. So this is a positive 3 fourths. We're going to make that a negative 3 fourths. That number is the x-coordinate of the vertex. The number outside, we keep that just like it is. That's the y-coordinate of the vertex. Great. So our vertex is done. The only other thing that we have to do is find the zeros. So we set the y equal to 0. We can start to isolate this thing being squared by adding 17 over 8 on both sides. And lastly, to completely isolate this piece being squared, we need to divide away this 2. So we divide 2 on both sides. And if we want to do 17 over 8 divided by 2, we can think about that as 17 over 8 being divided by 2 over 1. And let's picture this fraction coming up to the numerator and flipping. That would give us 17 over 8 times that fraction flipped. That's 1 half and that's 17 over 16. So that's what this side becomes. So what we end up getting, these twos cancel, we get that x plus 3 fourths squared, I'll write that one first, is equal to this side, which is 17 over 16. So now that we have this piece being squared isolated on the left-hand side, what we're going to do is we're going to square both sides. And we're going to get rid of that square with the square root. So the left-hand side becomes, well, make room for it up here because I'm running out of room. It's going to be x plus 3 fourths. And then the right-hand side, remember we need to put a plus or minus on one of the sides. I'm going to put it on this side here. The square root over, of 17 over 16, we can simplify that a little bit. That's the same thing as saying the square root of 17 divided by the square root of 16. And we know the square root of 16 is 4. So we can write this as the square root of 17 divided by 4. So that's how I'll write this. So now all we need to do to completely solve for x is subtract that 3 fourths on both sides. And when we do, we end up getting that x is equal to a negative 3 over 4 plus or minus a square root of 17 over 4. And if you want, since they have common denominators, you can combine this all as x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 17 all over 4. And that is your zeros for this problem. So yeah, this last problem here got pretty gross, but the good news is that's about as gross as you can expect a problem on completing the square to be. So if you feel pretty good with this, then you're definitely set. Now, if you want to go ahead and try to test yourself here, here's a problem for you to try and answer in the comments. So in this problem, you want to find the vertex and the zeros of this quadratic here. So try that out. Let me know what your answer is in the comments. And if you have any questions on anything we talked about in this video, again, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to you when I can. Now, remember, I do have that extra video where you and I'll go through and complete the square on 10 more quadratics and we'll find the vertex and the zeros for every single one. So if you're interested in that extra video, especially if you have a quiz or a test coming up on completing the square, then I highly recommend you check out that link in the description. And while you're there, you might as well snag the notes for this video too. Lastly, guys, make sure that you're subscribed to this YouTube channel because if you're not we're gonna have problems but that's not me forcing you to do that you know just, just do it if you want to I guess all right that's gonna do it for this video guys and I'll see you soon